What is up guys? TW Pooty on here with another video and with another music review. And this is Michael Jackson's discography ranked. Definitely, man. Uh, the king of pop himself. This is definitely something that a video that I've really actually have had planned for so many days now. I've been going pretty much listening throughout all of Michael Jackson's um, official studio albums. Well, the ones where, you know, that kind of started from like off the wall to like Invincible. I didn't listen to like the ones where he was a kid. So basically, uh, we're going to kind of go ahead and like, let me see, go into presentation mode just off that. Every one where he was a kid, I have not listened to. So do not get on me in the comment section for that. Because it's like Kid Mike, I don't know. It's like I wouldn't really... I don't know, like, I can't really, like, vibe with the whole, like, because that's when it's, like, I don't know, kid singers, I don't really find myself interested in, even if they're, like, really talented, you know, it's, like, I, I, I Justin Bieber damn sure didn't appeal to me, um, fucking, I mean, even kid rappers, like, you know, Bow Wow didn't really appeal to me, Romeo didn't really appeal to me, even as a kid, I was just, like, I don't know. Something about, like, little kids, like, doing music, I never really got the appeal of that. That's just me, personally. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. So, even with that. But the three categories here in the middle is didn't listen to. Um, and the other category is best ever. And then the other ones are trash. And the ones that I'm going to go ahead and put in trash right now, I ain't even going to lie to you, bruh, because... I know that there is no Michael Jackson albums that are really trash that you can definitively say are trash, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put this, I'm going to go ahead and put all the posthumous albums, all these, like right in here, right in here, except this is it. And the only reason why I don't put this is it. Is because that was something that he had a hand in trying to make. And then that's like a soundtrack album for like a movie that he was trying to make anyways. So I'll go ahead and put that in like I didn't listen to it because, you know, and I would put it in best ever, but I haven't listened to it. But I'm putting it kind of in that middle category. It's like kind of all right um, because, yeah, it's something he actually had a hand in. So posthumous albums of any artist. I typically am never really a fan on, a uh, fan of, unless if that artist directly um, had something to do with the album, or if someone very, very, very close to them had something to do with the album, which they very, very much approved of, and all of that. Um, like, yeah, but definitely, man. So I just kind of want to go ahead and kind of get into that. Um, so yeah all of those that's kind of how i rank a lot of those other albums and stuff like that so with that being said get ready for the most biased michael jackson review ever because let's be honest michael jackson simply just is the goat. <laughs> so with that being said let's go ahead and get into some of the studio albums uh because i'm not doing compilation or demos either uh, nothing like that, but yeah, off the wall, off the wall. One thing I like about off the wall, and I'm gonna go ahead and put it up here. I like about off the wall is that it's very funky. It's like, like you you could tell this is where Michael Jackson truly, I feel, was like really becoming MJ. And like, yeah, that Michael Jackson, like that, or no, that Jackson Five influence was still there, especially considering all the funk elements that were like into that album. But it wasn't bad because it's like, even with that, you could tell Michael Jackson was truly becoming his own and truly shining like that, bro. So that's what makes, you know, this kind of feel like better for me as opposed to like the child albums because the child albums was like, I, I guess it was more a little bit 
kind of poppy, kind of all that. And it's like, yeah, some of the works that Michael would become for are known to be very poppy, hence him being the king of pop. But it's different with MJ. It, it, like, it's a little bit different. Uh, but yeah, man, honestly, there's so many just great songs on here, man. Dude, you got Don't Stop Till You Get Enough. I'm looking at these right now. I don't think there's a single skip on this. I'm going to be real with you. Rock With You, Working Day and Night's Pretty Good, Get Off the Floor, Off the Wall, the title track, Girlfriend, you know, okay. She's Out of My Life, you know, a bit a bit softer, you know, for my taste, but I like it, man. And it's like, and I can't help it. Man, falling out of love, burn the disco out. And the best thing about this is it's only 42 minutes, 10 songs. It doesn't overstay its welcome. And that's one thing I've noticed, always noticed about Michael Jackson albums. They do not overstay their welcome, bro. Like, they're not too long, bro. That's the problem with albums nowadays is that they're too damn long. And if you're going to have them that's like, have an album that's like majorly long, it better have a lot of substance to it. Luckily, that's not a problem with MJ. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the next album. I'm not going to lie. This, for me, might dead ass be the best Michael Jackson album of all time. This might be the greatest of all of his albums. Thriller, because when I say that there's not a single skip on Off the Wall, there's really not a skip on, like, Thriller. Every song is a bop. Every song. And it's a little bit shorter being at 42 minutes, you know, with nine songs and stuff like that. And then from off the wall, but still pretty dope. Every song, absolute banger. Straight up, man. Oh, my God. I'm telling you, want to be starting something, mind you. I love that song. That song has a very special place in my heart from all the times I done heard it on GTA Vice City. And I done played that game like uh, so many times, man, and yo, it, 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 it's it, it's so it's amazing. And Billie Jean, that's another one. As soon as you start up GTA Vice City, you hear that, sh you know, or at least that would, at least that is the case on the original versions. And the case no more on the trash ass remasters. <laughs> you know, that's a whole nother thing. But nevertheless, yeah, man, Thriller, great album totally great album right there great greatest michael jackson album ever in my personal opinion so it's definitely going up there for that reason but let's get into the next one man now basically off the wall was michael jackson really kind of like you know slowly kind of showing himself a little bit kind of getting a feel for you know like really the whole like you know I, I, he had pretty much been a solo I guess he had already had solo. I mean, he had solo albums before, but I think this was him really kind of getting into the whole solo thing, um, you know, being a solo artist and all that and really kind of doing his own thing outside the Jackson 5. Um, so Off the Wall was that. Thriller was him fully coming into his own, just all like just straight up with the confidence and everything, confidence, the swagger. All of it, man. The moves, all of it. All of it, bro. It's just amazing. But I've talked enough about Thriller. But the next album to talk about is Bad. And one thing I actually like about this album, too, is that, you know, this was a little bit Michael Jackson. He, you know, he was like, and mind you, this was also kind of like, at the, you know, MJ done had that incident, you know, where his hair done burnt on that Pepsi commercial. And then he kind of, like, you know, had to do that little thing with the skin and stuff like that. Um, so, you know how that goes. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, nevertheless, man, uh, bad, bad is cool because this was Michael Jackson. He was getting into his rock stuff for real. He, he was he still had the pop elements to it. But he was really adapting to the whole rock thing and having that kind of sound. Especially with songs like Dirty Diana and stuff like that. Um, and then, you know, Speed Demon. Whoa. Bro, if you ain't listening to Speed Demon, son. 
Oh my God, bro! I, I'm telling you, that song is insane. So yeah, that song is crazy. It's just it's out of control. And then of course on bad. Now this is something I didn't even know initially, but the solo, which I mean I cut, which is like if you listen to his guitar solos, you kind of already had a feeling. But for me, not being very much of a Van Van Halen listener. I didn't even know it was Eddie Van Halen that played the solo to that shit, bruh. I didn't even know that was Eddie Van Halen that played that solo. That's crazy. And did that even cause like a rift between like uh, Van Halen because of that shit, too? That was, yo, that was wild. I'm, yo, uh, so that's an interesting factoid right there. Yo, Mike was so into that rock stuff, he had Eddie Van Halen. One of the greatest guitar players of all time play a solo on his hit song, Bad. That That is amazing. Truly is amazing right there. Uh, but, yeah, this one had some tracks too, man. I mean, I like the tracks on this. Bad, of course. The Way You Make Me Feel. Speed Demon, in my opinion, being the best song on there. That's just me. That's just me. That's just me. Liberian Girl, you know, that that, that was cool. That was a little cool song, you know. You know, that little, you know, sexualized video and all that. I mean, hey. And the hey, and the girl in that video is bad too, bruh. Just good friends. I like just good friends. Just good friends. I'm a, I, hey, you know, that, let me let me not even get into the let me not even try to sing that a little bit, man, because you two gonna try to demonetize me off that. Um another part of me. I like that song. Y'all probably recognize that from Rush Hour. Okay, let me let me stop. Let me stop. All right, but <laughs> anyway, uh, but man in the mirror, you know, man in the mirrors. All right, like that, and then can't stop loving you. Who was this featured by? I forgot who this was featured by. Sad, Sida Gary. I don't know who that was, but yeah. Dirty Diana, that's definitely one of his more heaviest songs on this whole album. That was the more rock, heavy rock influenced on this entire record. And then Smooth Criminal, you know, that's a hit. And then Leave Me Alone, so I'm going to be real. This ain't had no skips on it either. I mean, shit. Honestly, honestly, I'm going to be real. This ain't had no skips on it either, so I'm like, honestly... The first three Michael Jackson, or or I'm sorry, not the first three, but I guess the first three is him as like kind of grown Mike. The first three albums, all bangers. Ain't had no skips, none of them. But next, we gonna go ahead and get into Dangerous. Released in 1991, you know, this... I would say this probably had to be this Michael Jackson album to me had more variety in it than probably any of his pet than any of the albums that he's done before. So there's a positive on that one. You know, it had elements of hip hop, elements of rock, you know, in those slow ballads, you know, all that. Um, yeah, definitely, man. So, yeah, and all that stuff like jam. You know, featuring the late Heavy D, um, most deaf. You know, that's a good track on there. Even got the little music video, you know, Michael Jordan on there and all that. Yeah, definitely. And Why You Wanna Trip On Me is cool. In the Closet, you know, that's where things kind of get a little slow and stuff like that, a little slower. You know, She Drives Me Wild, okay. This is where a little bit it kind of gets a little slow, kind of like... I don't want to say they were bad songs, but I wasn't really feeling them like that. You know, I wasn't really feeling them like that because I'm not really a slow jam type of dude. You know, not not really. Um, and then Remember the Time. Love that song. Definitely a great song. Great video. Eddie Murphy. And I forgot who the lady in that uh, music video was, but she was fine, too. Matter of fact, I could have sworn I might be wrong, but didn't she play as that... um? Didn't she play on Martin as like uh Martin's like um you know old like middle school like teacher or something that was like trying to get with him in that episode? I don't know. But yeah, definitely that. 
And uh, let's see. So that was a cool music video. I like that as well as a cool song. Can't let her get away. You know, heal the world. You know, this is where the serious, more slower tracks kind of come in. Um, let's see. Black or white. You know, like that song a lot. Uh, and then who all, oh, yo. Ain't gonna lie, man. Hey, honestly, I didn't think I was gonna like this song. I, I didn't think I was like, uh, uh, I'm not gonna say I w didn't think I was gonna like it, but I thought it was just gonna be another slow Michael Jackson song, which it kind of was, but I mean, I kind of like that hook though. Who is it? Boom, doo, doo, doo. But you know, all that. And, you know, give in to me, like that one too. Uh, will you be there? That's all right. You know, that's all right. Cool, cool, cool keep the faith you know that's one of the more like very religious you know very gospel uh type of tracks and stuff like that um because before that i'm like i never really knew that like michael was such like uh like uh, I, I didn't really know of like michael's like religious thing i didn't really know you like leaning any of that stuff or not but yeah so that kind of confirmed it for me on this song uh, gone too soon is a tear jerker man and it's like dedicated to like one of his young fans i think i, I, I apologize if i'm getting this wrong but it's like i think they had like cancer or something like that they had some sort of a disease you know and they unfortunately didn't make it so that song's like a tribute to them uh so yeah that that's a tear jerker man even just talking about that Woo. let me go ahead and move on but uh dangerous you know dangerous is a, uh, i like that song too yeah that was a dope song too uh and but yeah i would say aside from a few tracks that were like a little bit you know too slow kind of a little too you know sentimental for my taste still a good album and then next is gonna be the final unfortunately the final studio album of the king of pop himself rest in peace and that is now there's a lot i mean there's a lot behind this album right here invincible oh man i mean it's like because it has like variety into it in terms of sound but not nearly as much as what dangerous did but it still got some like you know elements like r&b soul all that in there you know, it's got features from people like Carlos Santana and Notorious B.I.G. on a song where it's like, you know what's crazy, though? I'm not even going to lie. Before I get into the rest of that, I don't know if y'all know about that song, uh, Unbelievable by, like, Notorious B.I.G. It's unbelievable. But, you know, like that, I don't know if, like, y'all know about that or not. But why I thought that was Michael Jackson the whole time that song on that hook? I'm still thinking that had to be. I thought that was that I thought the whole time that that was him. Part of me still thinks it is. I like I don't know. Cuz it sounds a little like him and stuff like that. And I know at one point they did collaborate on a song, but I guess that was the song that winded up being on this. And maybe that song Unbelievable by you know that was on Big's album, maybe that wasn't him. But I guess they did. But yeah, they did collaborate on a song together and stuff like that, uh which is actually on this album. Um, but sadly that was way after, well, the song, well, I think the, by the time they did it, they were like, they collaborated on it when like both guys were alive. But I think by the time this, it came out, by the time I was on this album, B.I.G. had been long dead. So, uh, but yeah. And then on top of that, um, this tackles like stuff, you know, Usual stuff, what Michael Jackson be tackling, um, things such as love, um, like all that type of stuff, like romance. Uh, but this also tackle, well, I mean, he had talked about social issues before, like stuff on like black and white. Um, and like, what's that? Uh, yeah, like, yeah, like black and white and some others. He had talked about, so yeah, so yeah, it has that. But it also has some other themes such as like isolation and media criticism. 
You know, because I think around the time, like, a lot of people were really getting all up in Michael Jackson's business, bruh. And I think, when did he get accused of that stuff? I got to, matter of fact, I got to look that up real quick to see when he got accused of that one thing. Okay, never mind. Because when he was accused of that stuff, well, the first thing he was accused of was back in 93. And then the other thing he was accused of was, like, in 2003. So that's, like, two years after this album that came out. Uh, but yeah, around that time, people were still all up in Michael Jackson's business, all that type of stuff, just really getting at the man for like, really no reason. Like they were just really trying to like, but I mean, especially around that time in the two thousands, paparazzi was crazy, you know, especially with people like Britney Spears and all that. Yeah. Paparazzi, they were viciously going after everybody. So Yeah. So, unfortunately, the King of Pop wasn't exi uh, exempt from that. So, there was that. And then, on top of that, he even uh, talked about how wrong that, you know, Sony was doing them and stuff like that. And, and stuff like that, trying to, like, uh, get his masters and all of that type of stuff. Because Michael Jackson had bought, like, the Beatles catalog, you know, and there was some stuff with that. And I... Th and, um... He was alleging that, you know, somebody at Sony was like the devil or whatever. So there there was that, too. So there was a lot of stuff going on with this album. But nevertheless, let's get into the music stuff of this album, because I probably talked too much about the other stuff. But if you want to know, that whole Sony thing was definitely the reason why this wasn't promoted nearly as much as every other album was. But so, yeah, the songs here, uh, Unbreakable. Uh yeah man like yeah unbreak yeah unbreakable is cool I think actually yeah I think unbreakable is definitely the one where Big was on I think that was it yeah Big was on there Heartbreaker I like that one too I um and then Invincible Break of Dawn oh I like that one uh I like uh let's see Heaven Can Wait uh, you rock my world. Oh my God, I love that man. I love that song in that video, man. Especially with him and Chris Tucker, that was a cool video. Butterflies, speechless, two thousand watts. Who I forgot who the rapper was that collaborated with him on that song. Um, you are my you are my life, privacy. Uh, don't walk away. Uh, cry. So this one was definitely a lot longer than the other Michael Jackson albums. And definitely a lot more serious, too. I would say out of this one, this is probably the one that I really found myself liking the least. But, hey, I did say this was the most biased Michael Jackson review. So just getting to that. Yeah, I'm going to put this at best ever also. But heck yeah, man. But definitely... That was my list of uh, all the Michael Jackson uh, discography, reviewing Michael Jackson discography. Like I said, most biased Michael Jackson review. So if I got to give the whole discography of Michael um, a grade at all, I'm definitely going to give it a five out of five. Yes, a five out of five for the king of pop. Most definitely um, for just being the greatest of all time man you know one of like for being such a superstar for being such a great musician for being just great in every way man and influencing so many people that you've seen over the years people like you know uh what you call it chris brown people like trey songs uh people like neo he's in he's influenced so many people even like people like justin timberlake he's influenced a lot of people uh, and all that and made a lot of great music over the years so i definitely couldn't help but you know really kind of give some praise to the uh king of pop matter of fact i ain't gonna lie might just see a top 10 reasons why michael jackson rules video coming in the future too so get ready for that but nevertheless let me know what you guys thought of this video man uh you know if you liked it thank you if you didn't 
fuck you uh <laughs> naturally and yeah but if you like it feel free to like comment share subscribe if you so choose to and maybe just maybe but just a dollar a month well you know what i ain't even gonna lie man i ain't even gonna lie this might be the one time since i'm talking about the king of pop bro i'm talking about the king of pop real real talk I, and then I'm also talking about the posthumous albums and all that type of stuff. Me, I don't feel right. I don't feel, me personally, I don't feel right making money. E, like, e, even if I only get paid $5 off this damn video, I don't even, I don't feel right getting, you know, like making money off of Michael Jackson. But not, not off the King of Pop, bro. I don't feel right doing that, bro. It, it feels almost disrespectful in a way. I don't know. I don't know how to say it. So even with that, I ain't even going to shill my stuff. But one thing I will do, even though I'm not shilling the rest of the stuff, I will still give shout outs. That's right. Shout outs to the awesome Booty Hunter VIP members here. People such as Xavierus. Tiffany Stratton fan, uh, the Gothic fighter, Marquise Marmar Taylor, the J, and of course, Alejandro, Alejandro 305. That's right, man. Shouts out to all the Booty Hunter VIP members, man, as well as shouts out to the rest of y'all who just support the channel in the way that y'all do by liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and all that good YouTube stuff. And one thing, I said I wasn't going to shill, but I am going to shill my gaming channel. Because if you like me and you like video games, hey, why not check out the Booty on the Plays channel where I just had my recent playthrough of Tony Hawk's American Wasteland Part 4. That's right, Part 4 of the episodic, episodic series that we doing for that game with the GameCube version, no longer the PS2 version because... I pretty much explained that in the video, but nevertheless, uh, check that out if you're interested in that. Uh, but anyways, if you're already subscribed uh, or not subscribed, click that subscribe button to uh, get notifications of when I upload as well as all notifications so that you don't ever miss not even one, not even one upload from yours truly. And with all that being said, this has been your boy, T.W. Booty Hunter. Give you guys another banger. And I'll see you guys next time. Rest in peace, King of Pop. Thank you for being an ass. And not watching the whole video. You didn't listen to a single damn thing I said. Thank you for being an ass. Only hearing what you wanted to And getting butt hurt Like the sensitive little bitch you are Thank you for being an ass